In this video, we'll be going over how to build up your reaction speed so that you can get kills more quickly in Valor. What's going on, ProGuides fam? It's Sergeant Frost, and today we'll be talking about reaction time and reflexes. Reaction time in Valor is an interesting topic. Even though it doesn't seem to have a massive effect, a few milliseconds could be the difference between a kill and death. I mean, that's also why for a lot of people, ping is such a big deal. Milliseconds matter, and the quicker you are, the more successful you tend to be as well. Just look at pro games and top-level streamers, they're so damn fast. And whenever they get a highlight, it's even quicker. So one might wonder, how can I be as quick as the pros and react just like a Radiant? Well, let's talk about that. But before we do, it's a good time to let you know that there's also other ways to improve your game, such as Valorant Stats Center, Aimlab's new top-tier tracker that gives you access to data and metrics that only pro players had in the past. Not only that, Stats Center even has revolutionary data that tracks your impact called Delta Damage. So if you want to have all the information you'll ever need to master the game, make sure to click the link in the description and download Valorant Stats Center by Aimlab today. So first things first, raw reaction time itself isn't actually that important. Pros aren't pros because they simply have a better raw reaction time. There are so many more important things and honestly you could argue that reaction time as a concept is somewhat misunderstood among many players. If you do one of those reaction time tests, the game is pretty easy. Your screen is red, you wait for it to turn green, and as soon as it does, you click. Simple enough. Because of that, your learning path is pretty basic as well. You only need to train one basic reflex, click on the color change. If you put your parents that never play games on your computer, you can give them five practice runs, and they'll still be setting decent times after a few practice runs. Doesn't exactly mean they'll be popping heads in Valorant though. In reality, when you actually hop in game, there's a whole lot more to think about and react to. It's no longer a simple game of wait and click, as Valorant is a much more complex and nuanced game. In the reaction test, the unconscious reaction or reflex you had to train was simple enough, click on green. But in Valorant, you're playing against real opponents. You and them are constantly moving, you're using abilities, and your enemies are able to show up from all kinds of different angles that you need to be aware of. And if that wasn't enough, you're repeatedly making split-second decisions, keeping track of what all nine other players on the server are doing, and formulating your own plan in the midst of chaos. Each of these things are like pieces of the puzzle to you understanding your own reaction speed, as you'll see as we go along. There's a lot of different reflexes to train, each with unique practice methods that are either more or less effective for working on specific areas. For example, a reflex such as recognizing and dodging flashes, especially more difficult ones like Breach or Sky, can only really be practiced in game. So in order for you to get really good at dodging them, you basically have to spam games and put in conscious effort in doing so. While another part of your reflex, like stopping your movement before shooting, can easily be practiced in a tool like the range, where you can get in many reps very quickly. For newer players, something like target recognition is also very important. And while most mid to high level players already have this down, it's best practiced in a game mode like free for all deathmatch where there's always a lot of opponents around every corner. Or if you have particular trouble instantly separating friend or foe, you can even play something like replication, where even though fights are not as realistic, you not only have enemies, but also have teammates running around too. That way you'll get used to quickly recognizing whether a target is a teammate or an enemy based off their outline. One thing many players think is the most important part to quick reactions and fast reflexes is having good aim. Now, of course, when we talk about being quick on the trigger, we kind of assume that good aim is already there to begin with. Quickly reacting to a target but missing your shots is not hugely impressive after all. And although reflexes are somewhat relevant to aim, they're not also quite the same. When you have fast aiming reflexes, that just means that you're quickly able to mentally recognize a target and start aiming for them, not necessarily at them. You can have very fast reactions but also be wildly inaccurate and completely miss the mark. So whether or not you end up hitting targets is more of a matter of aiming skill rather than just reflexes. A good aimer or one that's comfortable in their aim and sensitivity is not only quicker in their actual mouse movements, but their trust in their own aiming ability also leads to faster reactions and quicker target recognition in and of itself. On one hand, it's because they've spent more time practicing, but it's also because they expend less mental bandwidth on worrying about or paying attention to their aim, freeing up their mind, enabling them to react quickly. Another way that good aimers speed up their reactions is of course through solid crosshair placement. By having good crosshair placement, you're able to eliminate the real aiming or adjustment part in many situations. This means you're able to kill your opponent even more quickly as the reflex starts to come closer to a basic reflex like in the reaction time test example. You pre-aim an angle, you anticipate an enemy being there, so you stop your movement preemptively and if an enemy is indeed there, you just click their head. Although of course, this can only be really fast if you practiced it enough to a point where you don't have to expend your full mental bandwidth to execute it. After all, having your mind full of thoughts is kind of like looking at your minimap when it comes to reaction speed. The more things you're worrying about, whether that's aim, crosshair placement, or decision making, the slower you're going to end up being on the trigger. So getting these concepts down is very important. The undisputed best way to practice aim in isolation is Aim Lab. It's free and it's easily the most time efficient manner of practicing your aim. The benefit of Aim Lab compared to something like Deathmatch is that you waste no time. 
There's targets on your screen constantly, and there's never downtime like what is commonly the case in deathmatch. Your aim doesn't have to be perfect, but getting comfortable with it is hugely important. Make sure that your aim is at a level where you can kind of zone out, listen to some music, and you're still hitting some solid scores and performing consistently around your peak. AimLab does a really good job at making efficient practice very accessible. There's even different levels of difficulty to make sure your routine is not overwhelming and you're able to progress at a pace that feels natural to you. Of course, the better you're able to get with your aim, the faster you'll end up being in game. But be mindful that the best players have a huge head start compared to you, so you shouldn't expect to be at a level like 10s after just a few days of practice. The best way to go about it is to just keep at it and practice for a set amount of time, ideally every day or at least as often as possible. Even just spending 10 minutes before you play will go a long way if you do it for often enough. Do this and aiming will become more natural to you very quickly, which also means your reactions will directly improve physically. We really can't stress the idea of mental bandwidth enough. If you're constantly worried about all aspects of your game, you're going to end up doing worse than if you make it all natural. That of course applies to aim, but your mental bandwidth can also be stressed by other factors. Maybe you're unfamiliar with the map, or you're playing against an agent you're not used to. All these things affect your reaction speed. Just to give you an extreme example, when I first transitioned from CSGO and started playing Valorant, I put all of my time into the Vandal and wasn't used to the Phantom at all. This of course led to me playing a lot worse with it for one. But initially, I even believed the Phantom was less accurate than its Vandal counterpart, where in reality the opposite is true. Nowadays, I spend a lot of time deathmatching with the Phantom, so I no longer have this problem. But it does go to show how much of an impact a small unfamiliarity can have on your overall skill level. The more things you get down to second nature, the less of a problem these things will become, and thus the quicker your reactions will be in game. Because of that, it's a good idea to practice new agents in Unrated, and try out the new maps before they get enabled in competitive mode, as that'll give you a huge advantage over your opposition. Now, another thing that kind of ties into this is focus and anticipation. Of course, if your mind is clouded, you're not really going to be able to focus on the things you'd ideally want to focus on. But even more importantly, you're especially not in the state of mind to start anticipating what your opponents are going to do, as you're too preoccupied with sorting yourself out. One aspect of focus, of course, is paying attention to the game, not having TikTok open on your phone or having a YouTube video playing in the background. But I'm sure that's not a problem for most of you. The other is more about mental readiness. Are you getting ready to see an enemy in the corner you're about to clear, or are you already thinking about what you're going to do once you get on site? What you might have noticed if you try doing the reaction time test is that your reaction times can vastly differ depending on whether you're truly focused or if you're a bit zoned out. Same applies to Valorant. If you're fully ready for someone to peek the angle you're currently holding, you're simply going to be quicker. Of course, for these individual fights, whether you're holding or peeking an angle, crosshair placement is important. But it's not just about skimming the angle. You need to actually anticipate an enemy being there as well, if you really want to be quick. When instead, you're just going through the motions, it's not all uncommon that you clear a corner, stare directly at an enemy, and then move on to the next angle before you actually notice a player was sitting there. At which point, you're probably already dead. Staying focused in game really stems from using your limited mental bandwidth for the right things, like where your opponents likely are, how they're playing, and what you can expect. Are you playing versus an eco? Maybe don't run into Haven's garage, and partially be careful around A short for someone hiding on the left hand cubby. That way, if there's someone there trying to be cheeky, you'll be ready for them. But you're only able to pay attention to these things when you've gotten comfortable with all the prerequisites in the form of basic and more advanced reflexes, so that your mental bandwidth is freed up. In conclusion, there's a lot of things to practice. Think about your aim, your guns, your peeking, and your ability usage. Every one of them is trained more efficiently in different ways, and each time you get more and more comfortable with them, your reaction speed increases. You're using less mental bandwidth, and you're quicker not only through reps, but also through focus and keeping a clear mind. That then allows you to focus on important things like making good rotations, smart decisions, and anticipating the next move of your opponents. Alright, that's gonna wrap things up for now. I hope this video helped you out and now you're more motivated to get in some reps and go work on your weaknesses. If you have any more questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment or even visit ProGods.com to ask one of our great Radiant and Immortal level coaches. This has been your host Sergeant Frost and good luck on the grind.